Hi there everyone, we're at the Royal Society. I'm here in the archives with Louisiane and we're going to be talking about a big name in the world of science, Ada Lovelace. Who's Ada Lovelace for people who don't know? Ada Lovelace is a pioneer of computers. She's considered to be the first software developer in some way. She's made the first computer software. She's a big deal. There must Very be loads deal. about her in the Royal Society card catalogue. Here we go. Uh, Love, hang on, Thomas Lovell, Lovendal, hang on. Loving bot? What? Low? What? Huh? I cannot see a single card with Lovelace on it. What is going on? Yeah, not a single card. And when I arrived here, I've always been taught by my master, Keith, that we had nothing concerning Ada Lovelace. This is going to be the shortest video ever. There's nothing about Ada Lovelace in the Royal Society archive. Except I've been digging. <gasps> Let's go upstairs. Come on. Okay, everyone, here comes a story of mystery and chance discovery. Louisiane, where does it start? Tell us the story. So we've been working on this very, very large correspondence of one of the most important men of science of the 19th century, Sir John Herschel. And as part of this very large correspondence, we had one volume entitled Miscellaneous Correspondence. And so as part of the digitization project that we have um, on the Herschel correspondence, I thought I'd have a look at the miscellaneous correspondence just to see what was inside. This is it. So So you were just sorting through just all sorting these papers. Through and trying to understand what previous archivists had done. And I found this typed index table of content that, again, we didn't know we had. Most of them are letters by Herschel. You'd expect that. And then it's, it starts with letters and papers by other hands. So not by Sir John Herschel, but to Sir John Herschel. Okay. Right there. There we were in the middle of the volume on ISO. Lady Lovelace. Hang on a second. Were you excited or did you go straight to her? Or tell me what your reaction was. My first thought is, it's another Lady Lovelace. Really? Yes, of course. You just, you just think, we can't have missed this. This is too big to have missed something like this. If we knew we had this, we would have catalogued it. We would have claimed it. We would have said to everyone, we have some Lady Lovelace. Letters. So my first thought is, it's her mum. The signature was the first thing that could tell us whether it was Lady Lovelace. And the first letter, well, didn't have a signature. But Ashley Coombe, Portlack, Taunton. Oh, well, that's Lady Lovelace house. So maybe it is Ada Lovelace. And this is 13 September 1848. So the, the right. date's checking out. The date is checking out. And here we have in the second letter, A, A, Augusta, Ada, Lovelace. Ada Lovelace. Wow. How many different letters by her have you got? So we have four letters. The first one is actually partial. It doesn't, we don't have the end of it. We don't know what happened to it. But the fascinating thing is that none of those are about computer science. None of those are about the topic that I would have expected. Ada Lovelace and Sir John Herschel, who's Charles Babbage's best friend, the man who actually developed those calculating machines, they are about something completely different. They're about the beginning of climate science and how we can actually measure climate. And Ada Lovelace is doing research on behalf of her husband and using her one chance to write to the most important man of science of her time for her husband. She tries to find a correlation between the frequency of, of, of the moon, uh, of the full moon and clear weather. There are none, but she's trying. And she's try, uh, trying to actually obtain the data to show one way or the other whether there is a correlation. Look how messy it all is. It yeah. is quite messy writing. Yeah. She's asking for this lunar theory and she's saying, I would like the rules for solving given problems as to the moon's position and other actual mathematical facts respecting them. So she's not content to just have astronomical data. She wants to have the rules and she wants to be able to apply them. I said it was quite a messy letter. At the end, she writes, this paper is a little better than blotting paper. I almost fear that parts are nearly illegible. <laughs> so she's, she's, she's aware. Quite conscious. <laughs> she's she's self, not conscious. She's self aware of her handwriting and the mess. This one, she's just asking for his approval for the notes that she's written. So I asked for a question in my last about the number of observations you may have about the moon again. Anything upon this point uh, could now be inserted whereupon you might appreciate. And then she writes, you will probably not care to read the whole paper. There are a few remarks of mine, and she underlines it, two notes at pages eight and 19, but quite unconnected with the moon. In the latter, a very essential passage mentioning photometers in the copy. The other thing is completely unexpected, 
which is she's actually taking an interest on what kind of instruments you could use to automatically register the weather. Right. And she's turning to one thing in particular, which has just happened, which is the invention of photography. And she, from Taunton, from Somerset, thinks, well, what if we use photography to actually record the effect of uh, the sun, the calorific effect of the sun? We could actually see how long it takes for a plant to develop. I could look at when my plant arrived at maturation and look at how much sun they've received. Okay. This is really, really advanced. And actually, John Herschel has developed on his own uh, an instrument that looks a lot like that. And the exchange between the two is fascinating because they're trying to find what instrument could work best. And we have another letter, which again, we didn't know about, which is a note, a draft of Sir John Herschel's answer to Lady Lovelace. And he's actually coming with a completely different type of instruments, which is cryophorus. And basically it's a self-registering instrument where the impact of the sun is weighed. And so you actually have a quantitative measure for the impact of the sun. Now, my favorite passage is actually in the last letter. So here she's actually explaining her vision for the instrument. As to the suggestion for what I term a nebulometer, because I had special reference to the effects of clouds in particular, Lord L, Lord Lovelace, insisted on my writing for him what struck me quite accidentally and must have struck others, that the photographic agent certainly be made invaluable for that purpose. We don't have the full answers from Sir John Herschel, but they are the Bodleian Library. And one of the letters by Sir John Herschel actually writes, uh, in, in his letter he writes to her, a very long series of equations regarding the declination of the moon. And he precedes his letter by saying, I make no apology for writing to you in algebra. This is the most obvious way to talk to you, Lady Lovelace. Right. And Ada Lovelace responds to this. You were quite right to make your letter mathematical. I can understand that language better than any other. Lovely, I love that. How do you feel holding and reading and looking at things that Ada Lovelace has like written with her own hand? I mean, she, she sat here with this piece of paper and wrote that, and now you're getting to look at it and hold it and read it. What's that like? It's wonderful because, you know, the Royal Society's history in admitting or non-admitting women is a complicated one. Um, and having those moments of history where you have a woman who's making this really important contribution and who's just trying things out and getting things wrong, by the way, it makes her feel so much more human and so much more approachable. She's not only a pioneer, she's also someone who's just interested in things. And having those letters where she's helping her husband, but actually she's doing most of the actual scientific work. And you can see how she's underlining things, writing quickly, adding things. They make her so human. They are really wonderful letters. There's a long history, of course, in the early days of science of women not being as involved as they should have been. And then someone might look at this and say, well, actually, no, some women were involved. But of course, she was a woman of great privilege. Absolutely. She was one of the wealthiest people in the country. Not only that, but she had great scientific and literary privilege. She was the daughter of Lord Byron. So she's not anyone. She had the privilege of money and time and leisure. So, you know, it, it is a very niche place for women to be able to do science. Only aristocratic women will be able to do science. But within the relationship between scientific couples, I think there's a lot more to look at through those correspondences and those moments where you can actually see the actual contribution of women. It will still be a very small portion of women who have contributed to scientific topics, but it's really important to still look at it. And what I really like is also Herschel's response. Herschel talks to her like to any of his scientific correspondents. He doesn't cuddle her. He doesn't hide the fact that she's making mistakes. He's very direct and he responds on a scientific level as equals. And that is quite heartwarming to actually think that women were also supported by some fellows of the Royal Society. Of course, if there were any men who were aware how good women could be at science, it was the Herschels. That's right. They had Caroline Herschel, so. Yes, and John Herschel's aunt Caroline was his great model. She really was. I thought I'd carry on digging because since I had found one, I thought I could find more. So I actually heard from Keith that he had bought a portrait of a very, very young Ada Lovelace. It still hasn't been catalogued, this one, but this is an acquisition by Keith for the collections. That's come from like a book or something, has it? This has come from the book and it is a reproduction of the engraving that Lord Byron was said to have kept of his daughter his entire life. This is Ada and it engraved a part of a poem that he wrote, Ada, sole daughter of my house and heart. 
Of course, for those who don't know, Lord Byron, one of the most famous poets ever, and the father of Ada Lovelace, and they're buried together as well. They are. It is a very complicated uh, story of fatherhood and the. <laughs> I think daughter. everything with Lord Byron is quite complicated. <laughs> exactly. I think. Yeah. But there we are. We have the engraving nonetheless. Okay. This is the actual paper. By the Earl of Lovelace. That's right. So Ada isn't credited as a main author there on the final work. But she isn't. But if you look at the footnotes, you can see at the bottom of the page that she has signed some of the footnotes. A A L, just like our letters. Well, it's something. Yeah. At least she's there somewhere. And the other most famous contribution of Ada Lovelace, we actually have the volume itself. And again, her name is not on the title page. It's quite a messy book, I have to warn you. Okay. This is what she is famous for. This is what she's famous for. And you can see here, Menebre on Babbage's analytical engine. So the whole essay, which starts here, is marked, translated by Ada, Lady Lovelace, daughter of Lord Byron. See Cosmos Volume 6. So this is a librarian who just realized that actually Ada Lovelace had authored those. But, but yeah. who does get the credit? So this is a translation. And so the name at the top is that of Luigi Minebra, who became Prime Minister of Italy, and who's the one who actually wrote down the lecture that Charles Babbage gave in, in Italy. So the credit is correct. But the name of the translator is not given anywhere apart from signing. So you can see lots of notes by the translator, all of those which will be what is considered the first program. Right. All of that is hers, and it's only signed. Well, A-A-L. There we go. A-A-L at the end of all that pioneering programming. Amazing. There we go. Anyway, those letters, what a find. And there are more letters that are as fascinating in the Herschel correspondence. Really? Yes. Are you suggesting we do more videos? Always. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to help us keep making them, or maybe make even more, why not consider supporting us on Patreon? Some of our supporters have their names on the screen at the moment. Patrons also get access to behind the scenes pictures and extra videos and things like that. We try to make it worth your while. Hey, and speaking of Ada Lovelace, almost exactly nine years ago now, I published a video from Ada Lovelace's tomb on one of my other channels, 60 Symbols. So along with a Patreon link, I'll include a link to that video down below. Why don't you take a look?